Now let's take a look at environmental change, first off with deforestation. Coming off of our previous discussion regarding human activities, now we're going to focus in on the environmental change and so the results of those human activities, and beginning with the alteration of species in the form of it being, them being removed. Uh, and so we'll look at both vegetation but also animals uh, in the removal of those species um, over time. Uh, and so some examples of this we'll look at, uh, not in particular here, but uh, in terms of our oceans and water bodies, one of the things that's happening is acid rain, which is due to uh, industrial uh, pollution, uh, which we'll talk about a little bit later on, uh, has started to kill fish and plants in certain areas. And so although we won't talk about uh, you know, aquatic life, uh, but it definitely does occur there in terms of species removal. Uh, further, over harvest of an area, and so we've seen in per certain areas of, of, of the oceans and uh, where in which there's an over harvest and essentially you take away every uh, bit of one particular species it has a huge impact on the entire food chain food web in that area uh, but we're going to focus in on the, the uh, big one uh, here deforestation so that's going to be the focus of this particular video lecture and so I'll try to hook the females in here with a picture of a cute cuddly pot, uh, panda bears uh, and one of the things is in these areas deforestation what it's doing is it's removing their habitat so it's not so much that these animals here are, are being removed per se themselves by, by humans, but the removal of these particular areas largely for development as you know, keep in mind China, uh, fast growing, it's all, you know, a billion people. Uh, and so as these places grow, as their population grows and as their affluence grows, one of the things is deforestation is removing the habitat in which uh, the panda bears live, which is then causing them to have a, as it says at the bottom, a very perilous state. Here in the middle, we've got something called the black-footed ferret. Uh, it's a carnivore, this guy here. Uh, and he eats the guy over there on the left, a uh, prairie dog, which is an herbivore. And prairie dogs are seen as a pest in the Great Plains because, uh, you know, they like to eat uh, vegetables. They like eating uh, plants. Uh, and so if you think anything about the Great Plains, it's an area that's been heavily agriculturalized. And so it's been converted lar largely to agricultural. And so the guy on the left is perceived to be a pest and so removing him has subsequently started to remove the populations of the carnivore here in the middle. Of course we've learned various reasons this semester why we see so much dense forests uh, there along uh, the equator and the tropics and that's largely due to the equatorial low pressure, uh, the warm temperatures, the, all that precipitation uh, is conducive to dense forests. Uh, one of the things we also find is in these areas uh, we find much of the rainforest that once was there is now gone. Um, so some would argue that if we continued at this rate, uh, all of the world's rainforest, 100%, would be gone by 2050. Uh, but of course, with more knowledge and awareness, I don't think we'll get to that point. Uh, but why is this you know, something that's a, of concern to a local Indianapolis company like Eli Lilly is the fact that m many of our cancer-treating drugs actually come from rainforest plants, and so 70%. Uh, so essentially, if we remove the rainforest, we're m removing what could be a potential uh, for, for other types of diseases uh, and other types of pharmaceuticals uh, and chemicals that are used to uh, heal. Uh, further, uh, one of the things is you know, much of the rainforest actually hasn't even been studied. Uh, and so it's so dense, it's so varied, uh, it's got these different layers uh, that are, have all this different life. It's only, you know, 1% has even been studied, and so there's a lot still to learn. This is called a proportional symbol map, and so it's funky looking, and so the idea here is the states, the countries, I should say, are all different uh, sizes based on how much forest loss that's occurred there. And so if you look at the United States, uh, our forest loss, we're actually not even, we're shriveled up. Uh, but below us, that big blue is actually Mexico. Uh, but then we see over here on the bottom, the green being Latin America, and you can see there, especially there in South America along the equator, you can see massive deforestation, uh, but also there in Africa as well. And so Africa, you can see it particularly in the area we call the Sahel, which is just south of the Sahara Desert, 
uh, but then of course there in the middle uh, where we have the equatorial areas as well. Over there in Southeast Asia, we can see the tropical rainforests, Indonesia, Malaysia, Philippines, we can see those countries over there in which having a huge amount of forest loss. And so this is really showcases the fact that tr uh, of all the world's forest loss, much of it there in the tropical areas. Let's further focus in on the tropical rainforest by looking at Brazil. Brazil's had a deforestation rates that are comparable to the, you know, all of these states put together for these different years. And so this is a map just to show how much forest loss has occurred in Brazil relative to actual United States, uh, actual states. This map here is an infrared map that uses red to showcase vegetation. Uh, and so what we see here is uh, over time we're going to look at kind of the change to this area. But the yellow line, the purpose of that, that's uh, pretty much the main roads uh, that we find in this particular area here. So it's not a vast area, not you know massive, but still uh, these these roads here are very critical to understanding deforestation here. And one of the things you'll notice just in that uh, t 10 to 11 years, uh, how these deforestation has removed, in particular, almost a particular patterns here, this, these straight lines. And so what they'd essentially do is they just uh, continue to log and they'd use these main networks to then, uh, to then you know, move the, the logs to somewhere else where they can be uh, turned into something. And so here's the removal of species here in the Amazon rainforest uh, in terms of deforestation. And so you can see how it happens in, in particular order that continues to build out. And so it's these long uh, uh, linear uh, appendages that come off of the main highways. Here's a more recent image but also showcases the uh, change that we've seen here. And So here's 1999 uh, and then we filter in uh, now we'll see the 2009 we can see the change over time and so it's very much that similar pattern uh, that we saw there. And so what's going on here is it's demand for resources from this particular area. And so we go back to the whole idea of population, affluence, when we go back to that whole I equals P times A times T formula. So now what's going on? Why? Uh, why is this occurring? So first off, a very simple uh, reason would be this timber. Uh, so using this for paper products. So, so I've said this before, uh, but much of Southeast Asia uh, provides uh, paper that we use here in the United States. And so that kind of showcases the global economy. But, you know, we obviously have plenty of forest areas, you know, in the United States. Why are we not using our paper? Uh, but that demand for, for uh, timber also in terms of uh, for biomass, for using timber for as a, as a heating source. Uh, as a cooking source. And so that's something that you know we've been doing for as long as humans been around. Uh, but anyway, and so the scale of population then plays a key role in that. Further, pasture and farming, and so converting these areas to farms. And so when it's a, just a, tent, a dense tropical rainforest, it doesn't have much use. Uh, but if you remove that, you can then turn it into ag, or you can turn it into uh, places for uh, cattle to graze. Uh, and so we look at here. We'll look at it in a minute the the role of the uh, Brazilian steak industry, uh, for example. Now, how does this occur? A lot of times they use a, t a particular technique in, uh, uh, let's say, lower income countries or or more uh, rural areas that are a little bit more impoverished. They use a technique called slash and burn. So instead of having you know a big old caterpillar uh, a tractor come through and just remove all the trees, what they do is they use a, a kind of a, sl a slow process where they slash everything. They cut all the uh, everything down and then burn it, uh, kind of a controlled burn. Uh, so we'll look at an image of the result of slash and burn agriculture. Further, the type of soils we find here are what we call detritus soils. And so it's a very, very thick O layer. It's a very, very thick top layer of the soil. Uh, but one of the things is you just move that. If you you know adjust it, if you just kind of move the dirt around, essentially it renders it useless. Uh, so detritus soils are, are, are fairly fragile, fra uh, fragile O layer uh, of the soil, and going back to our soil horizons. Uh, and so one of the things is a lot of times, you know, because we're not using the most you know, sustainable uh, techniques, a lot of times the intense farming will actually overuse the area and render it useless uh, over time. Uh, another characteristic is something called shifting cultivation. Uh, so essentially as you burn one forest area, uh, and so you, you use an area, uh, but then all over time, eh, it's not really, you've rendered it useless, you've ruined all the soil, you just simply move on to the next area. Uh, and so you kind of constantly are shifting your cultivation to new areas after essentially over-agriculturalizing uh, previous eras. Sorry, sorry, areas. 
Uh, and so one of the things is Mother Nature very slowly makes that trek to back uh, to a tropical rainforest. Keep in mind how big those trees are and how long it takes for them to grow over time. And so it's a very slow process for Mother Nature to return after using these areas that have been, uh, which you have shifting uh, cultivation. Uh, and so going back to Brazilian steak, and so one of the things that we've talked about, uh, I think, before is the fact that over over time, Brazilian steak has become something that's in demand. People want it. Uh, it's something that's you know we see in downtown Indianapolis, this Fogo de Chao, these Brazilian steak houses. And so people see this as an opportunity to make uh, some some income. So you have this land, let's convert it to something we can actually make some cash. Uh, so we're looking at kind of once again I equals P times A times T. We can see population, affluence, and uh, technology playing key roles there. Finally, uh, there's now been a recent rush for biofuels, and so uh, we see ethanol uh, and, and sugar cane, for example. Uh, you can actually now use that for fuel for, for cars, for, for tractors to power transportation of various types. And so this is now also another aspect of, of how and why these areas are becoming, uh, you know, changing, why, why the demand for these areas uh, and their resources are so high. Here you see the result of slash and burn, and so just clear this forest, burn it, uh, then move on to the next area. And so here we can see uh, kind of the process of deforestation more at the ground level instead of looking at the uh, you know, aerial views of change over time. Previously I used this to showcase the role of individuals in the whole I equals P times A times T formula. And this is Saddam Hussein in his area in which he uh, on purpose uh, drained drain these areas to try to remove uh, much of the vegetation because he's ticked off these uh, individuals in this area. Uh, and so once again our military came in of course in, uh, in the course of 2000 to 2007. So here we have maybe a positive story, reforestation in action, in which 2007 we can see how this area is now uh, back to its previous state, quite lush. And of course this is quite important for an area as dry as it is uh, 